Hello students, we are finally going to get two strings, which we, we've gotten quite far without needing them, so we didn't introduce them until now. But uh, in this section, we want to introduce uh, many different data types, and we've seen many different ways of, uh, of storing data, and a string is one of the simple ones that we have not yet introduced. So let's jump right into it. Many classes would start off with some sort of a hello world uh, in a string to begin with. We finally get to uh, our strings now. Now, in order to have a string, what I do is I use quotes and I put some characters and I'm going to check using the type function to see if Python understands what this is and Python is now telling me that this is a string. So I know Python recognizes that it's a string in those quotes. One thing that uh, you can use is in Python is you can use either quotes. So if I want to use that, that's also a string. Python doesn't care whether I use the single quote or the double quote character. Now it is useful, like let's say we wanted to say Nason's Python class. Well, I want to use uh, the character of a single quote inside a string. So if I want to do that, what I can do is I can just use double quotes on the outside. Or if I wanted to quote someone, I could use single quotes on the outside and double quotes on the inside in order to have those double quotes in my string as well. We've used type. We know that type goes along with some other stuff. So I could either use uh, a string here or I could just type str because we know that's what Python uses for string. And you'll see we have all sorts of things. Many of these are extremely familiar. Uh, for example, let's see, we got len here, right? So we could try that. That should give me the length of the string, the number of characters in the string. So let's try that. And we get 13 characters in combinatorics. Let's see, it looks like we also have indexing. So we can grab characters from combinatorics. For instance, if I wanted to grab uh, the character at the beginning, since Python starts off counting at zero, I just do a subscript with close brackets and zero, just like I would do for a list. And it's going to give me the zero character. Or if I wanted to get, say, the seventh character, I can get the seventh character, which is T. It's actually the eighth character. It's character labeled seven since Python started counting at zero. And if I wanted the last character, one thing I could always do is I could go minus one and then it starts going backwards and it'll grab that S for me. So that's nice. What else can we do? Well, we can look up here and you know, we can deal with containment as well. So let's play with that a little bit. So uh, containment in strings, we could ask, hey, let's say we have uh, T and I want to know is the character T in number theory and this works just like we would be you know doing it for uh, lists and tuples uh, where we have some object here it is the the character T the single one character string T and it checks that that is in number theory however we can actually do something more with strings because the in will also check for substrings being included. For example, if I want to know is theory in number theory, it will check to see if those characters, the T-H-E-O-R-Y, are all contained inside the string number theory in the same order, also consecutively. So it's checking for theory as a substring. Note that if I were to check for theory with a lowercase t, that's going to be a different character. So if I ask, is this true? It will return false because this substring does not appear here. There's a different character in the beginning. If I were to ask uh, for, say, like this will return true, but if I wanted to reverse this, 
R-E-B. Now all of these characters are in the string number theory, but they're not in the same order. So this is going to return false. So in does everything that it does for tuples and lists, but it does something more here. And I haven't given you any evidence that we don't have this kind of functionality for tuples and lists, so let's check. Suppose I wanted to know is 1, 2 in 1, 2, 3. I can check that. It's telling me no. 1, 2 is not in 1, 2, 3. But you could say, hey, well, 1, 2, they do appear in that order, yes. But when I ask is this object in the tuple 1, 2, 3, it's going to check to see if this object is in the tuple 1, 2, 3. Now, I can make that be in the object 1, 2, 2, 3, with the, where the first object in the tuple is itself a tuple 1, 2. So we need to not do this because there would be some confusion as if I was asking for 1, 2 as a substring or if I was asking for 1, 2 as an object. Right? And this object is one of the objects that's in the tuple. The same thing occurs in lists. If I were to, say, change this, that's going to return false. However, if I wanted to see, hey, is this in this list? And that's going to return true. So we have to decide on a meaning and with tuples and with lists, it's going to check, is this object one of the objects in the list? Is this object one of the objects in the tuple? Now, the reason that this doesn't cause any confusion, because you know there would be two ways to interpret this and this, the reason this doesn't cause any confusion in the case of strings is there's no way for me to have REB as a single character in number theory, right? The characters are N, U, M, B. I should move that around. <laughs> uh, but the characters are here. So there's no confusion. When I ask is REB in number theory, I'm not asking is REB one of the characters in number theory. Obviously it's not. REB is a three character string. So it's not going to be one of the characters. And because of that, we don't have to worry about, you know, which way will Python interpret things. There's only one way to ask this question, is REB in number theory? And that is as a substring, whether that substring is contained. So one last thing, we can use strings in all of the built-in data structures that we've dealt with so far. And what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's, let's see. We can have a set with strings. There we go. Uh, they don't all have to be strings. but you can have strings in your sets. They're immutable, and because they are immutable, we can actually include them in sets and dictionaries as keys, and uh, in lists, we can easily include them. Even things that are not immutable, you can include in lists. Let's stick the tuple one, two in there just to give it some variety. In dictionaries, strings are very commonly used in dictionaries. Suppose you wanted to keep track of grades and you had some students, uh, you could have a dictionary which takes each student to their grade. And then you could call, you could say, hey, I wanna know what is the grade of David? And it will tell you their grade. So, uh, technically, in sets and dictionaries, we can put in anything that is hashable, but we don't want to talk about that just yet. We don't need to. All of our immutable things are hashable, and therefore we can put them inside our sets, and we can put them inside our dictionaries, and we can put just about anything we want inside a list. We don't even have to check for, 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 for anything special.